So we're going to look at how we can cause the electrons in a copper conductor to flow. In order to do this, we need a magnetic field, a galvanometer, and a conductor. We're going to pass the conductor through the magnetic field in a downwards direction, and then pull it up back through the magnetic field. This is the basic principles of any generation of AC. In other words, we've got a magnetic field, a conductive material, normally copper, and usually we're rotating one inside the other in order to produce an alternating current. In order to get the loosely bound electrons in this copper conductor to flow, we're going to pass it through the magnetic field and see the reaction on the galvanometer. As we pass it down through the magnetic field, the pin pulls this way. As we pull it back up, it goes that way. Okay, so we're causing the current, in this case, to flow in one direction as we go down through the magnetic field and flow back in the opposite direction as we pull it back up through the magnetic field. We can use the same setup in order to prove the amount of EMF, the electromotive force that can be developed when passing a conductor through a magnetic field. This is done in exactly the same way, but this time we'll be looking at increasing the EMF, electromotive force, when we pass the conductor through the magnetic field. Taking the conductor, and as before passing it through the magnetic field, we can very see very small deflection of the needle from left to right. As we increase the speed, or in this case velocity, of the conductor, we can see that the galvometer moves quicker from left to right. We can increase that further by increasing the strength of the magnetic field. Very difficult for me to change the magnetic field here, set. So the only other thing I can do to increase the EMF developed is by increasing the amount of conductors within the magnetic field as I make each pass. So if I go and we look to increase the amount of copper now that we're passing through the magnetic field, we can see that we increase the amount of induced EMF. If I go again with more loops and go again and speed it up, we can see that my deflection is greater as I pass it through the magnetic field than it was when we first started. Therefore, increasing the speed of the conductor through the magnetic field and increasing the amount of copper that is in the magnetic field as it passes through increases the developed EMF, in other words, the electrical pressure in the circuit is increased. So we can see from the first part of this presentation where we passed a conductor through a magnetic field and what's the deflecting back and forth on our galvanometer, we prove the principles of alternating current. In other words, that our current will go in one direction, seen on here on the period where it goes up from zero degrees through to 180 in one direction and then falls from 180 through to 360 in the opposite direction. So we increased the EMF induced into our conductor when we increased the speed in which we were passing the conductor through the magnetic field, and when we increased the amount of copper that we were passing through the magnetic field. The one thing we didn't manage to change was the strength of the magnetic field. The formula here, E, which is EMF, equals flux density in Tesla's represented by B, the length of the conductor in meters, and the V, which is a lowercase v, is the velocity in meters per second. So in other words, the speed in which we pass the conductor through the magnetic field. So the induced EMF is affected by a stronger magnetic field, which we couldn't change. It was affected by a longer conductor in the magnetic field. We added more coils to increase the length of conductor in the magnetic field, therefore increase the induced EMF. We also increase the velocity, the speed in which I pass the conductor through the magnetic field, therefore increasing the amount of induced EMF 